Anyway, uh, it's all about our guest uh, today, and uh, it's peace activist uh, Jørn Boye Nielsen, uh, who is the founder of RICO. Uh, and if you don't know, RICO is an independent council uh, on international conflict resolution, uh, very much focused on uh, promoting peace building. Uh, first and foremost, over military solutions. And um, RICO works to promote a nuanced, nuanced uh, debate. Um, and um, uh, the goal uh, for the Council is also to contribute to well-informed decision-making uh, in Danish foreign policy. And perhaps this is also a part of that, uh, that work we're trying to do today. RICO was founded in 2009. Uh, and Jørn is still a member of the board, uh, and uh, he has also written two books on conflict uh, resolution, one called International Conflict Resolution, and the other one, uh, Handbook in Conflict Resolution. So, you're very uh, uh, well walked in, the, in that area. Uh, you have prepared an introduction or uh, a PowerPoint uh, show for us to provide us with a little background mm. uh, on uh, the upcoming referendum. Um, so I just uh, want to uh, uh, give you the word. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you to Gaba for the nice words. I think I would like to, to stand up because I have been also a folk high school teacher for many, many years. And, and I feel if I stand up, then, then there people are not so easily falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. So uh, I have prepared first uh, a part of the defense opt-outs, what we are going to, to, to vote uh, about, and after that a little bit more free talk about peace in Europe, where I think there are a lot of, of, of questions to, to debate, not at least with the Ukraine-Russia uh, uh, war, etc., how to relate to that. Uh, so it would come in the second part because I feel there should be a little bit more than this defense uh, opt-out. Yeah, and now uh, let's get started. Um, I have been introduced, so uh, let's not use more time on that. Um, the first thing I would like to, to mention for you, it, uh, it is that in 1992, something for Europe important happened. And uh, it was that the Maastricht Treaty uh, was uh, decided upon in, in, in Europe. Twelve countries at that time decided for this Maastricht Treaty. And uh, the, the important thing it did, it was that it transformed the Europe, uh, or at least the, the Europe uh, 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 we talk about, from the European Economic Community, EEC, to the European Union, EU. Why is that important? The first one, EEC, it was the European Economic Community. It was about economy, about trade. And only that. That was how the whole thing started, trade. And it was transformed to the European Union. And you can already hear union. It, it's like America, it's a union, a federation of more than, than 50 states. Soviet Union, there were also different states. Uh, also Germany with all its lender, etc. So it sounds a little bit like a federation. So EU was transformed to that. So it was a very, very big thing. And therefore, in most of the countries, there was just uh, a decision in the parliament. But in Denmark, there should also be a vote. And so in Denmark, there was a referendum, 2nd of June, 1992. And what was the result? 57% of the population said no. And all the countries, all the 12 countries in the EEC had to say yes, Otherwise, the whole thing was collapsed, to say it in a dramatic uh, word. So it was a very, very big collapse at that time. And, 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 and there was, what's, let's say, it was a kind of scandal all, all over Europe. South Europe said, let's throw Denmark out. Italy, France, etc. They they said, we cannot have Denmark if they say no to that. 
But some other countries, for instance, Germany and UK, they said, no, Denmark is a good fellow. Let's keep them. We have to find a solution. So that was the whole, how the whole thing started. And then w what happened in Denmark was that the political parties, they came together. Uh, and uh, the national compromise was the result. Some of the parties which voted no, for instance, Socialist People's Party, they, they said, we can accept the Maastricht Treaty if we get some exceptions. So the national uh, compromise, it is the Maastricht uh, Treaty plus four uh, exceptions. Uh, and, um, or four opt-outs. So, so for Svars Forbehold, it, for it is opt-out in English. So I try to, to use this word because that's, I think the, uh, then, what was the four uh, 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 opt-outs or exceptions? You have already mentioned them, but let's take them. Not being a part of the euro. Denmark uh, would like to keep the kroner. Uh, it was not being a part uh, of several legal areas. For instance, with regard to refugees, uh, um, uh, Grenzer, border uh, policies and uh, police uh, cooperation. And um, the third uh, 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 opt-out, it was about that Denmark would not accept the EU citizenship. So a new concept in the Master Treaty that um, maybe in the, in the future there should be a EU uh, citizenship and not Danish citizenship, German citizenship, etc. It is not so important because it, 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 is now, it has now been decided that this EU citizenship will not be um, uh, implemented. And then the fourth one, and it's what we are talking about tonight, it is not being a part of, uh, of defense. The, uh, uh, the population instead, uh, the, the, the population were afraid that uh, a European army uh, would be created. So a supranational European army would be created, and the Danes didn't want that. So there was a new uh, referendum where uh, they voted about Maastricht plus the four exceptions, the four opt-outs. And this uh, compromise was accepted by uh, first the Danish voters, so, so there was more than 50% who, who supported it. And then it went to, 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 the, to the EEC, and there it was also decided upon. So, so, so Denmark was again accepted in, in the good society of, uh, of the EU and, and, and in the, the Maastricht. But still, we have these four uh, uh, exceptions or opt-outs. Um, maybe we should also say, and maybe it, it, it's a little bit, what shall I say, <laughs> easy to say, but, 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 but I think it should be said, there was a split between the political elite and the Danish population. The Danish elite, they were in favor of, uh, of the EU, uh, a broad mass of the population, they were against, they were skeptical. So there was this, this division between elite and, and, and people. And of course, it was used by those who were against that we had this elite and, uh, and people. Um, then uh, we have to say that all the opt-outs, they are still in effect in Denmark. Um, but there have, been, uh, there have been other attempts to change them. There was a, a Euro uh, referendum in year 2000, and it was lost also. So, 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 so there was a majority against uh, going to, to, to the Euro there in, in, in 2000. So again, the skeptical people said no. Th then there was the illegal referendum uh, not so long ago, in 2015, it was also lost. There was also a majority. 
the skeptical Danish people voted no to, to what the elite said. Um, and now we are in the middle of it. There is the, the third op, uh, opt out, uh, the defense op, uh, opt out, and uh, which kept Denmark out of defense and military projects and policies. And it's, it's going to be uh, voted against, uh, voted about here the 1st of June. So, so this is the history, the short history of, uh, of the opt outs. Uh, and it's a third time, and it's interesting to see uh, what will happen this time. Because we said no in Maastricht, in uh, the uh, first Euro referendum, and the legal referendum. So there were three no's. And only at that time where, where we had the four uh, opt-outs or, 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 or exceptions, there was a yes. Um, so so that's, that's the, the history. Why, uh, and for a long time, the social democrats have been against that, that we have a referendum because they didn't believe um, that such, such, such a referendum could be won and the social democrats are in favor. Um, but then uh, Mette Frederiksen, she, uh, who, who acts very, very fast, she saw, uh, she, she, she got a magic work, word and this magic, magic word was Putin. So she went out and said, Putin. So, and, and it seems to be, <laughs> to be working, because there is now a majority in, in the, uh, in, in the uh, opinion polls that, uh, that, um, that, that this uh, bogeyman, he, he, he can somehow create something. So that's also an interesting thing to see how how do uh, how does the, the Danish population, uh, skeptical Danish population, act now? We don't know, so uh, we will know it the, the first of of June. So this is the the history. Now, what 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 is this defense op, uh, opt out? And uh, I have said a little bit about it. So EU has developed from being a civilian-oriented uh, 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 community to becoming more and more security and military-oriented. So there has been this development uh, over time. And a little bit more about that. In the Maastricht Treaty uh, 1993, it contained uh, introduction of foreign policy and security policy. It was mentioned that that this part should also be a part, but there was not written very much about it. So, 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 so it, it was still a lot of, of, of all the other things which were focused uh, about. But then, uh, as I see it, something happened with the Lisbon Treaty in 2009. The Lisbon Treaty, it is uh, also called the constitution of, uh, of EU. And uh, I have just taken how big this uh, and detailed the Lisbon Treaty is. Uh, th there are uh, about 400 uh, clauses in it, and uh, it is so thick. I, I just want to show you the Danish constitution. <laughs> so here is the Danish constitution, very, very thin. You, 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 you can hardly uh, see it. And, and, and here is the, uh, the EU constitution, the Lisbon Treaty. So a very, very big difference. And uh, of course, w w we could talk a lot, a lot about, about this. It's very bureaucratic. Nobody has read it. And uh, hardly anybody has read the, the, the Danish constitution, but some have. Uh, if, if you study political science, we have read it several times. But, but this one is nearly impossible to come through. There are five clauses on, on uh, security and defense uh, policies also. And, and it is said that uh, we have to work through, uh, towards uh, um, a common uh, 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 army, 
uh, there, there has to, 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 to be also a military uh, and defense uh, uh, relation in, uh, uh, in, in the EU. So, so some general goals about that defense and military is now also a part of, uh, of the European Union. It started with, with this one. Uh, and it's close 42 to 46. Uh, there it is spelled out. And it was in 2009, so about 12 years ago. It, it really started that, that it had a foundation and it was in the EU constitution, uh, etc. And um, it also opened up for military and defense related uh, missions. So, so today, uh, uh, EU has seven uh, military missions in, in Africa they, uh, and also in Europe. Uh, they, they have in Bosnia, they have in, in Mali, in Somalia, uh, pirates, uh, they, they, have in, uh, they are training soldiers in the Central African Republic. They have also some in, in Mozambique. So, so, so they have um, sent out soldiers uh, who are helping uh, to train soldiers out there. They are also sending, in other places, they are hunting pirates or terrorists, uh, etc. So, 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 so military uh, for, with force uh, 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 missions. Um, and mainly in, uh, in, in Africa. Of course, they are uh, asked to come there of, of the countries or of the elites in, in, in Africa, but they are still there. Um, there are other kind of projects, but I don't want to go into to everything. Uh, let me just follow this. And then um, you can ask more about specifics of, of, of EU. But I have to tell you that it's a little bit bureaucratic, and 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 uh, uh, some of, of of the missions are not very strong. Uh, a man like Peter Vigo Jacobsen, he he he's more or less denouncing uh, uh, EU, uh, and he's seeing that 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 it is NATO who is a real. Uh, uh, what I say, defense-related organization, and of course it, it's a national uh, armies in, in each of the countries. They are the main uh, uh, military ones. And, and, and what there is in, in, uh, in EU, of course it is missions and there are soldiers down there, but it's not very strong. And it's few soldiers. He mentions yeah. numbers like four, four five thousand soldiers, troops yeah. in, in, in Europe, in the European Union, compared to 40, 50,000 mm. troops uh, with the NATO, even more with the UN and uh, yeah, yeah, so on. Yeah. They are now talking about to have an army uh, uh, of 5,000. Uh, and... Uh, they are talking about having it in 2025. So, so, so they, don't, uh, they don't have an army still, but they are just talking about it. And uh, we shouldn't forget that, that the European Union, it, it is 27 countries. Small countries like Malta and Luxembourg, and big countries like France and, and Germany, and so on, and uh, North and South and East and, and West. It's not easy for them to, 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 to agree. And, and, and in this defense area, uh, all the governments have to agree. If just one country says, uh, we don't agree, then it would not be realized. There, there has to be unanimity. There has to be consensus. It, so it is not supranational, just to say it in that way. Uh, so 27 countries have to, to, to uh, <laughs> agree on, on all the spe specifics. It's not easy. It's not easy. And uh, so therefore, it's not the strongest point in, uh, in, in the European Union. But it is there, and uh, the politicians would like it to be there stronger. There's no... Uh, they, they would like to, to, to be seen as much stronger uh, and, and, and 
have at least the 5,000 soldiers. It's not very much. And they're just talking about it. It's not realized. They're talking about it. There's much talk in, uh, in EU. And uh, you can see it. I mean, they, they is, the Constitution is such a big book. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we, we talked about that I would uh, supplement you with some yes. questions uh, during the presentation. And I just want to ask you, you make it sound as if it's, it's some, or maybe I'm, I'm, I'm wrong in misinterpreting it, but it sounds a little bit as if it's, uh, it's problematic that there is this development of the European Union. And now in the, in the situation we are in today, with Putin acting so aggressive uh, mm. uh, towards Ukraine, mm. uh, we have a war in, in Europe. Um, isn't it a positive thing that the European Union has sort of uh, developed uh, a defense cooperation that can be built now and perhaps uh, could, uh, could make us more secure in Europe when we see a threat like this mm. from Russia? Um, you're right that we are in a new situation uh, with uh, Ukraine and uh, uh, I don't say that, that Europe should not support uh, Ukraine and also not support with, with weapons. I think they, they should when, when uh, Ukraine is asking for it. So in a way, you are right. Uh, there is a new situation, but we have to be a little bit careful any, anyway, because uh, uh, civilian development is still very, very important. And, 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 and if we are giving in, uh, too much to, 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 to this military uh, development, then uh, I think uh, EU become a little bit like some of the other uh, nation states uh, with big armies, uh, etc. Et but, but I understand what you are what you are saying, and, and uh, uh, I don't know how I would react if I was a politician, but. but so I'm just cautioning, and, 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 and that is all. Uh, with regard to, to, to the missions in Africa, I don't know too much, because if, if those countries in Africa strongly want those missions, uh, I would also not say no to them. So, so we have to see how is it going with, with, uh, with those missions. Uh, so, Jan, I also want to ask you, uh, the Danish politicians are choosing to have a referendum right now because yes. it's a sort of opportunistic. They can see that we <laughs> now have uh, the situation, the, the war in Ukraine, yes. and this makes people uh, finally perhaps want to uh, vote yes uh, to broaden the, the, the cooperation in, with the European Union, and the mm. politicians want that to be part of, of the decision-making, mm. uh, obviously. Um, so I just want to ask you, when trying to sort of keep um, to, 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 to broaden the cooperation within a union, sometimes it can be a positive thing that you have uh, someone uh, attacking you or you have a common uh, enemy. Um, is this the case with the EU today in terms of the threat from Russia that, that uh, you're using the enemy uh, as a motivator or a driver to further cooperation? Mm. Yeah, it, it's at least uh, true that, uh, that, that it is a motivator to, to, to uh, get uh, Europe to, to, to cooperate mm -hmm. and, 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 and to take uh, the same uh, 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 decisions. And, and it's also made a further uh, strategy to, 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 to put Putin up as a kind of bogeyman and and uh, and uh, but is it problematic for you as a peace builder and as a peace uh, activist yeah, to is. see this development that yeah, we, uh, it, it is because I, I think uh, uh, we have to, to think of, of, of peace as as something with, with two uh, parties and those two parties they, they have to try to, to find uh, an agreement to try to find a win-win solution. And uh, I understand that, uh, of course, that Russia ha has, with its invasion, is not easy uh, to, 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 to uh, what shall I say, to, to, to cooperate with as it is now. Uh, and uh, so, uh, on the short uh, term, it's, it's very, very difficult. But in general, I would say that conflicts, they have to, to be solved. That, that, that two, uh, what I say, opposite 
parties, they, uh, they have to sit down and talk and, and, and find a solution they can both uh, agree to. That, 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 that's a general thing. Mm -hmm. So we are in a very specific situation. And we're going back to that. And we are going back to that. We're going to talk more about that. P But what PC, will your yeah. recommendations be, or, or at least, you know, how can you enlighten us in terms of what to vote for the referendum in the first of June? I, I see the yeah. the slide coming. <laughs> yeah. Then, then, uh, then I think I would take yes, the next. Exactly. I have not really hundred uh, percent decided what I would uh, 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 vote, but uh, but I would like to, to 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 give you some clue. But before I do that, can't we just take uh, uh, those uh, arguments? So um, the uh, uh, arguments for a yes uh, that it should be removed uh, this opt out. Uh, so yes, uh, it would be to have more influence, so to, to be a part, uh, fully part of, of uh, EU and, and, and have, what shall I say, influence together with the other ones. Uh, it would also be uh, that um, cooperation is intergovernmental. There has to be unanimity uh, in uh, all what has to do with defense and military. All countries have, have to agree. So if just one country put a veto, it stops. Uh, there is a consensus principle, a unanimity uh, 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 principle. So that is also an argument uh, for. And then uh, it's an argument for also that uh, there, there is an EU-NATO uh, complementarity. Um, EU can do certain things, smaller, Uh, uh, missions and and so on, and NATO can can take the, the bigger th things. So 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 there is different, what I say, roles uh, to, to 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 play, and also it's for the yes, uh, Denmark can act more independently of United States. Maybe there comes a new Trump. I think Mons Lugertoft has used this argument <coughs> very often. We should do it so, so, so uh, uh, we can be more independent in, in Europe. Um, and, and the no argument is that some countries press for supranational arrangements. That, that there are some countries, um, maybe France, who, who would like to have uh, supranational arrangements, to have a common uh, army, a European uh, army, for instance, um, uh, the no, uh, a no argument would also be uh, concentrate uh, defense on NATO and the UN and, and don't involve the EU. We have NATO and UN, why not use them? Um, and then the third uh, no uh, argument is that uh, natural allies uh, in defense is uh, United States, uh, UK, uh, in, in NATO. Uh, and, and, and the last one is uh, uh, to be concerned about which projects uh, Denmark will support in Africa. There are certain missions, it was just mentioned with Mali, uh, that uh, they were thrown out I don't, uh, was it also EU which was thrown out? I know Den Denmark and, and France was, was thrown out. Yeah, uh, yes. So, 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 so this is the uh, yes and, and no uh, arguments. And again, I have to ask you, John. Yeah. I just what have do to, I mean? uh, yeah, what do you mean? Or do you have yeah. an opinion as a yeah. peace activist and with your background with RICU? I have, a little bit, I have a little bit of, of a dilemma, because on, on one hand, on one hand, uh, I'm uh, I'm in favor of the European Union, and, and I think if you are a member of, of an organization or association, you have to be fully member. That that is one uh, argument, I uh, which is important for me. Uh, on the other hand, uh, all this about military. I think uh, other organizations sh should should do that. We we have uh, United Nations and peacekeeping uh, 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 organizations. We have also NATO. 
uh, and that's what should take care of military. Why go in and, and, and uh, militarize the uh, European Union? On the other hand, it also means something for me. So I'm standing there on like a weight, in weight, maybe, what is that called? Weight? Scale. Scale, uh, a scale and, uh, and trying to, to find out uh, about that. Uh, but m I can tell you that, that many in, in, in the peace movement, they, they would vote no. Um, but because they're afraid of what this is yeah. going to develop into, what will we see in the future? Yeah. Common uh, army and so yeah. on. That, that, that's true. But, but for me, it, it's also important that, what should I say, that we are part of the European Union, a, a full part. Uh, and, and we are not today. We have uh, four opt outs. So, so, so we are, I would not say half member. But, 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 but we are only partly member of the European Union. I think we should be fully member. That's also important for me. So it's this scale I, I would uh, decide what, what to do. Uh, maybe it's a politician answer, but, but it, it, it's really true. That's how I'm thinking. And uh, so many of my friends in, in, in the peace movement, they are saying no. And I don't totally agree with them uh, on this, because I think The European Union, we shouldn't forget that, that uh, at a certain time uh, 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 the European countries were fighting and there were so many wars in, uh, in, in, in between the middle uh, 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 big uh, wars, First and Second World War, in between, the, the, they were struggling and, and so on. I, I think It, it's good to, to, to have some rules for the cooperation, and it's good for the small nations also, like Denmark and Malta and Holland and so on, uh, because there are some rules. Uh, so, so it's not Germany and France who, who, who is doing all the, 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 the decisions. So, yeah. Yeah, I also have, a, yes. uh, I just want to add something yes. to that or supplement you a little bit, yes. because yes. one of the big problems for, for Danes, I think, with voting for, for the EU and for our membership of the European Union mm. is that we are very afraid of giving away sovereignty. And the problem is that mm. when we say we cannot give away sovereignty, which is decision power, to, to the other nations in the European Union, mm. uh, we're such a small country, we won't do that, but then we cannot either participate around the table. And if you look at the way the European mm. Union works, uh, mm. Danish politicians actually do have a say when they are mm. around the table. It's very interpersonal, uh, uh, the, the po uh, policy making and, and the way you mm. work. So, so one thing is that you are afraid of in the future that the Union will make some big decisions and Denmark as a small country with less voting power will sort of be overruled. That's one thing. But on the other hand, you'll have a, 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 actually you'll have more decision making power if you are a, a member of the, the, the talk around the table. And today with the opt outs, the Danish politicians are outside mm. the door. They are not a part of the discussion of the defense co uh, collaboration or cooperation. And, mm. and, and that That is sort of problematic, and for many, uh, I think, uh, mm. average Danes, it's a dif mm. difficult decision, or they, they can't really understand, you know, what will we gain from, from being a part, a full part, part of the union, and mm. what not. And I think it comes down to um, the belief in our politicians, the trust, mm. you know, how much do we trust our own Uh, democratically elected uh, mm. politicians uh, in terms of how they are handling the power yeah. in the EU. Mm. Um, so that was just uh, something I wanted mm. to say on the background of the work I did with my thesis on this matter. But, mm. uh, but Jan, we are moving into the second uh, uh, part of your uh, presentation and we're going to talk much more about uh, the situation with the, the Ukrainian crisis. So, so I, I would like now to, to go to, to the second part. Uh, which I have called uh, uh, Europe and Peace. And um, there was a golden moment just after the Cold War. Um, and uh, there was a proposal in 1990 uh, that there should be a European security... No, there was a, a, a European security conference, uh, the Paris uh, conference. And it, it agreed that there should be... Um, a European security set up. 
that all the European countries, including Russia, uh, they, 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 they should uh, form a security, what should I say, community, and, and, and try to, to, to keep uh, uh, peace uh, inside. And uh, it, it might have been uh, uh, possible if they had worked on it, but it was not, it was never realized. So it, it, it would uh, be this, a system where w one would have had a kind of common NATO. So if there was an attack of one country, it was an attack of all. But Russia was in it, Ukraine uh, was uh, in it, etc. In, in this conference. But some powers didn't, didn't go on uh, uh, with that. And at that time, uh, Russia was very much pro-European uh, after the Cold War, and it was even interested in both the EU and, and NATO membership just after the Cold War between, I mean, in, in the beginning of the 1990s. There was a very, very golden moment where we could have had peace in, uh, in Europe, but something else happened. Uh, we, we got this divided Europe, uh, some, which started to develop fr from the mid-1960s. Because in, uh, in Russia, there was chaos and disorganization in Russia in the 1990s. And, and the Russians, they are calling it the chaos years. People didn't get salary, trains didn't go on time, uh, etc. Nothing functioned. And it was seen as a failed state. And, uh, and there was a lot of, of negative expressions also. Uh, I just saw uh, a few uh, days ago that at that time uh, uh, Russia was called um, Burkina Faso with uh, atomic weapons and things like that. So uh, the Western powers, they could disregard Russia because it was a failed state. And um, then uh, NATO is taken up again. Because we shouldn't forget that just after the Cold War, we had the Warsaw Pact, the Eastern Pact. Uh, it was dissolved. And uh, the Eastern countries thought that the Western uh, military alliance, NATO, would also be, uh, be dissolved. But it didn't happen. NATO was kept. Uh, and uh, it, it even started to expand. So in uh, the first expansion of NATO was in 1999, where Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic is, uh, is um, taken in, in NATO. And NATO expands a second round in 2004, Bulgaria, the three Baltic states, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia. Further, 2009, Albania and Croatia is taken into NATO. To uh, um, what is it? Uh, Macedonia, uh, uh, November. No, what is it? Further, um, and uh, 2017 Macedonia, and now 2022 uh, to three Finland and Sweden. So um, today there are 30 nations, Western nations in in NATO. And with Sweden and uh, Finland, it would be 32. For Russia, uh, and, and we shouldn't forget that NATO was created against the Soviet Union. So in Russia, they, they, they see NATO as, as an expensive, uh, not friendly uh, 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 military pact. And then this NATO is just <laughs> coming closer and closer to, 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 to Russia. And something happens in, uh, in, uh, in, in Russia. Um, Russia st protested uh, all the time against these uh, expansions, but they were too weak. They were lying down, down. they were bleeding in the 1990s. But then um, Russia expands its economy. Putin uh, comes uh, in, in about 2000. And Russia expand, uh, expands its economy in the first 10 years of the century. There were high prices of, of oil and so on. And uh, it's, it's possible to have a kind of modernization. 
and uh, people get more and more nationalistic uh, because they get it better and uh, they think, okay, we can do it ourselves. Uh, so the army is uh, built up, uh, uh, people get a higher living standard, uh, etc. Nationalism spreads and uh, there is more and more negative feelings toward, towards the West. Um, then uh, comes some uh, uh, small wars. Uh, uh, Russia uh, invades uh, Georgia 2008 to, in, in support of, uh, of some minorities they have, but they uh, take their troops out again, and there comes to an agreement. And then again in Ukraine, uh, 2014. Um, a little bit more uh, about uh, Ukraine, because it's where it goes wrong with, with Russia. Uh, there was the Maidan uh, events in 2014, and the tensions were between pro-Western and pro-Russian people in Ukraine. We shouldn't forget that. And uh, there's a long story, but I can't go, go into to, 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 to that now. But what happened in uh, Ukraine in 2014 is that the pro-Russian president Yanukovych, he is pushed from power. It's done by, by the Ukrainian parliament, and he is simply kicked out uh, of the country. And um, the Western-oriented uh, uh, Ukrainians, they are taking over. Then, of course, uh, the answer from, from Putin is that uh, he's annexing Crimea uh, in 2014 also. It's a longer story I would not go, go into. The, 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 there was a referendum, but it was not up to the standard it, it should be. But Russia took over uh, Crimea, and it also uh, took uh, uh, part of Donbass, uh, which, where they supported pro-Russian separatists. But, but, but the big, big, uh, uh, was like I say, conflict, it, it was between two parts of the Ukrainians. This has completely been forgotten in the debates for the moment in, uh, in, in the Western uh, parts. And just by, was I say, supporting one part of, of, of the Ukrainians, it will not create peace. On the other hand, I don't know how many pro-Russian that there are in the East, because I'm... I'm not there. Uh, so we have uh, the situation. Russia in, invades uh, uh, Ukraine. And um, there is the invasion, the 24th of February this year. And there is a militarization uh, of, of everything. There is a, Russia, uh, of course, uh, come up uh, with, a, with a military invasion, which is not acceptable at all uh, in, in any circumstances, <coughs> not at all. Uh, it has also changed my, my view uh, a lot. But then uh, it's answered by, by a Western militarization. For instance, just to give two examples, Denmark um, has used 1.4% uh, of the DNP on military. Just overnight, they decided to, to, to uh, what shall I say, uh, 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 give uh, two two percent of the uh, of the DNP. It it, it means uh, increase the, the the budget with ten billion Danish kroner over ten years. So, uh, so 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 the fastness it 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 it, it happened with is 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 very interesting. So a militarization of Denmark, also of Germany, this very big and rich country, they, um, they increased also their budget uh, with 100 billion euro, uh, up to 2% again. It's, it's a huge, huge, huge amount, 100 billion uh, uh, euro. It's 750 billion Danish kroner. So, Again, militarization. Russia, of course, the, the, there is a militarization there, but also from the West. So, so, so we have mi militarization uh, meeting. And it is what worries me, that, that, that we have soon to, to think of 
coming a little bit back to, 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 to civilians. But I need to ask you something, yeah. Jan, yeah, now because I'm we are, so uh, many people are worried about uh, what will happen uh, with, uh, with uh, somehow defeated Russia. It, it, they, yeah. Their militarization hasn't been as, as strong as uh, the U Ukrainians with uh, weapons from the West. So, so, so in, in that case, uh, they are a nuclear power and they have a leader who, who is uh, someone that many say only have respect for hard power and strength. So in that situation, isn't uh, the, the, the building of, of, of the defense in the European Union and, and in, in NATO, in NATO when, where Sweden and Finland now mm. wants to be a part of the alliance, isn't that the only thing we can do in the West in terms of looking to, toward peace? Yeah, but we are already the strongest and, and now we are even more strong. And, and you also said in the first part of your sentence, what, what, what happens if, if one push uh, a big military power uh, as Russia up in, in a corner? Uh, it, it, it has so many nuclear weapons, uh, etc. And uh, it, it's more and more clear that, that Russia cannot cope with, uh, with uh, Ukraine supported with the Western uh, world. Again, uh, 30 uh, nations are in NATO, and they are all su supporting Ukraine with, with a lot of weapons and so on. And I think uh, we have also to, to think of, of, of the, uh, the thinking of, of the people in, in Kremlin. They would not lose. They, they have such, such a thinking that, that, that they would not lose. They would not just give in. They can't stand the humiliation. No. And, and people who know the psychology of, of, of the people in Kremlin has, has said uh, uh, in analysis that uh, if, if, if Putin, uh, uh, what shall I say, have a defeat, he will be removed instantly. So, so it's not an option for, 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 for Putin to, to lose because they have this, this set up uh, in, in, in their uh, heads. So, and, 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 and just half a minute, I would like to, to give you one, uh, uh, what shall I say, experience I, I had in St. Petersburg. I, I was giving a, a lecture to, to a university group on conflict resolution. And I told them about win, win, uh, etc. And then afterwards, the, the, there came several uh, up to me and say, we think it was very interesting, uh, but it would never work in Russia, they said. And I didn't quite understand it, but, but, but more or less what they told me is that uh, in Russia it, it's about winning or losing. And, 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 and if you lose, then you're out. Um, I don't know if it's 100% uh, because we also don't know maybe enough but 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 I think. But that uh, gives you a, a, that that that's a, a very strong uh, challenge yeah. for 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 a peace builder. I I yeah. uh, presume, or uh, yeah. in so, terms of conflict resolution, because how do we handle it then? Yeah. Should we not militarize? Should we? No. Yeah. I I I think that. I think what we should do right now is, is to to put pressure on 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 both Russia and. Uh, 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 Ukraine to, to, to have a cease to have a ceasefire and and then to have negotiations and and then they should negotiate uh, what they say uh, a, a kind of a treaty or agreement whereby which they could both live with and uh, West together with also China and India uh, who could pressure uh, uh, Russia. Uh, that would be the right thing, to, to, to try to put very much uh, pressure on both parties, have a ceasefire, negotiations. But that's not what we are uh, doing. Uh, Zelensky has said what we want is weapon, weapon, weapon. And, and Europe is saying, yes, we will send you weapons, weapons, weapons. I'm sorry, it's a little bit si simple, but it is, in my opinion, true. We, we, we have come into some kind of, of uh, what should I say, thinking that, that uh, the only thing uh, 
Putin understand is is power uh, and so on. And of course, there is something about that. Mm -hmm. But he is already pressed. He is already pressed, and in many many ways, he, his soldiers have a bad morale and. Uh, uh, some are sometimes rebel, uh, rebellion, uh, re rebelling, uh, and and so on. S so, I think it is another kind of pressure w w we have. I think he he would like to come out of it. He has climbed up in a tree and he can't come down. Let's let's help him down. But he has to agree to 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 some uh, agreement uh, with uh, Ukraine, and Ukraine should also be pressed. Because now Ukraine thinks we can win over Russia. And uh, then it means they, they, they would push Russia into a corner. And in this corner, we don't know, w would Putin use uh, chemical weapons or even a small atomic weapon just to, to change the situation? We don't know it. I think uh, I would say let's, let's forget about international law. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they settle for conflict resolution. Conflict uh, resolution, it, it is uh, when people start to negotiate and, 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 and then they re reach uh, a compromise they can both live with. It, it might not be that, that, that they are screaming of joy uh, over having won, but they have to live with it. And um, so, it is such negotiations uh, where we pressure both parts that, that, that now you have to give something in, but, 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 but uh, it should also be something you can live with. If we think of it legally, legally, then uh, it, it, there is a winner and there is a loser. It's, it's win-lose. If you go to a court uh, and, 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 and you have some 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 problem then uh, the the uh, uh, the judge he 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 would say yes you are right you are not right so 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 legally thinking is not good for 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 conflict resolution but legalistic thinking is very very strong and uh, many lawyers, they, they are going into conflict resolution and going into mediation and other things because it's stronger. Uh, if you have the two parties to a conflict, and it's right as you are saying, uh, a, a conflict is owned by those who have the conflict, then uh, it's also them who have to solve it. If you have a conflict with somebody, you have to come together and, 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 and you own the conflict. It's not others who own the conflict. And then you have to find a, a, a solution you can both live with. Jørn, is there any, yeah. do you have any uh, 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 real life uh, scenarios or I think it like historical uh, examples of how this uh, conflict resolution works? Can we, have we seen it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah many times. Like, in, I, I in, You've in, studied in, this. Uh, in, yeah. in, in the micro uh, uh, area, area, we're seeing it every yes. day. Every day, yeah. Okay. Uh, every time you, you, you have a small conflict. Where would you look towards uh, an example that could conflict. be used in this if, uh, situation with yeah, Putin? If, if a couple ha has a conflict, where should we, uh, where should we go for... for, for, for uh, for, for holiday and, and, and the wife says I would like to go to Paris and, and, and the man, uh, the husband wants to, to go to, to, to London then you have a conflict uh, because a conflict it is when two parties want uh, something different then you sit down and, and you say we have to solve this here yeah, but and in this case, it would be more, I think, a, a better example would be someone uh, killing uh, someone else's uh, family member and then having to deal with that. Yeah, then it is not so easy if, 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 if there is, uh, you can say, that there is done some harm. Yeah, if you, but it was just to see the, the example yeah. with Russia versus Ukraine, yeah. putting them together with the table. I think they will have those kind of emotions mm. in, in terms of how the yeah. war is. But but still, it, it it is two parties. If we take Russia and, and Ukraine, yes. and uh, the, the the outside, I mean, there is one thing which is playing a, a, a big uh, role, and and it is uh, the legalistic thinking. It is international law, uh, and Russia they have violated international law, and and that is true. 
But, but, but so, so international law, it's, it's one method. And then I'm saying, I think we should choose another method. We should, uh, we, we should choose the, um, what shall I say, yes, the conflict resolution uh, method, whereby you sit down and you negotiate, uh, maybe with a mediator, and then you try to find a solution you can both live with. Maybe Ukraine, maybe Ukraine could accept that, that uh, Krim, Crimea, Crimea goes to, to, to Russia because it's mainly Russian people living there anyway. Um, and, and then uh, when they come to, to, to Donbass, may, maybe they could uh, have uh, some, uh, what I say, referendum like we had in, in, in South Jutland after First World War, where the Russian oriented uh, uh, and, 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 and the Western oriented, they, they could vote uh, where they would like to be. And then you take each, each area, and, and, and then there's a vote by the people. Do you want to, 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 to belong to Russia, or do you want to, to, to belong to Ukraine? And I'm thinking of Donbass, where there are many pro-Russian people. Let them have a vote, and, and, and uh, so that would be one method. Uh, why are you thinking this, or what is the, the background for, this, uh, for, for your uh, idea about that? that this kind of conflict resolution will work? You know, that, uh, what do you base it on, so to speak? Have, have we seen it before in, in world history that someone like Putin could be appeased with the, with the conflict resolution around a table, like the one you suggest? We have, we have seen it w with the Sinai mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in 1980, something like that. Okay. There was, in, in one of the wars, uh, uh, Israel has, has occupied Sinai, mm -hmm. and, and, and then there was brought in a conflict resolution team from Harvard, mm -hmm. and, and they asked Israel, what, 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 do you, uh, uh, what is the most important for you? They said security. Yeah. And, and then they, they, they asked um, uh, Egypt, what is the most important uh, for you? because they, they, they own this uh, Sinai, uh, it, it is sovereignty over uh, 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 Sinai. And then they made the resolution that uh, Egypt got Sinai back, mm -hmm. but it should be demilitarized, uh -huh. because yeah. uh, it would give security. Yeah. Uh, to, so it was it solved uh, <laughs> right after the book. But somehow it, I, I, I get to think about, I have a picture in my head thinking about when you suggest this, I think about like Putin as a little boy climbing up the tree, you know, and we have to come take him down. And this is a, a situation where something has sort of boiled over and you will try to, to this is a, you see him as a weak part and then you'll try to help this. Uh, this person. That's one scenario. The other one is that it's a grown-up who, who is a complete psychopath <laughs> and who is, uh, who is aggressive and then you'll, you know, take care of him, talk to him as if he was a little boy. But the thing is that as soon as we have peace and stability, uh, this person will again uh, totally terrorize uh, the surroundings uh, in order to, to get his own goal. I, I don't think he's a psychopath. No, I think, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I, I think he, he, he's still uh, rational thinking, mm -hmm. but, but, but he, he acts from, uh, from Russian uh, interests. But he has learned one thing uh, from this now. It is that he can't do what he has done. Uh, let's take other empires. Let's take uh, uh, the big British empires. The, there was uh, once big Big, uh, they would, many in Britain would have liked to continue, but they couldn't. For instance, in India, there was a big, big, uh, what shall I say, pressure to, to have the independence, uh, you know, Gandhi, you know, marches and, and, and so on. At the end, uh, UK, hello, Great Britain uh, gave in, yes. step after step. Also in France, there was colonial struggles and it was uh, so some power, uh, and so on, a and they uh, made up their mind, we can't go on like that. I think Russia has to learn uh, with their empire that, that they cannot treat people like that. So, so, so there is the same logic as, as in the colonial struggles, they would learn something. And uh, so, so therefore we, we have to, what shall I say, cut in at the right moment and, and, and get some, some agreements. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, he's on the wrong side of, of, of uh, Putin is on the wrong side of history. No doubt about that. Let me say one thing, <laughs> which should be the starting point for the whole thing. We don't know how this war will end. We don't know. It can end uh, uh, that one morning we wake up, they, there is a regime change in, uh, in Russia. It could also uh, be that we uh, wake up one mo morning and there has been a small nuclear bomb in, uh, in Ukraine somewhere thrown by, by Russia uh, or chemical uh, weapons. There can also be a lot of other, uh, 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 what should I say, solutions. So we don't know how, how the whole thing will, will end. So, so that's one, th one thing. Um, so I have not written articles now for three, four months because I don't know how the whole thing will end. So, so, so I don't want to come out with, with opinions about uh, what. But, 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 my, uh, but I think, like the other colonial powers, they have learned from, from, from this pressure they had from outside. And uh, Putin and Russia will also learn something from this. I'm not in doubt uh, uh, of that. They, they, they would be, uh, what should I say, they have paid so much already in economy, and, and, and uh, they have an army which is partly broken, uh, uh, etc. So they have, they have learned it's not possible to, to make such an invasion uh, in today. But, but the problem is just how, how are we coming to the next step where we can have peace? Exactly. Who is going to facilitate this yes. uh, conflict resolution, as you should suggest? Let's not forget one thing, and, 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 and it is that, uh, and I know I'm coming a little bit indirect to, to the question, it is um, we have the West, and, and I have tried to calculate how many people there is in the West, 850 million, 850 million. This is the West. It's, it's all those who, who have put pressure, who have put sanctions against uh, him. 850,000. Now, let's take the rest. Let's just take two countries. Let's take China and India. If we put them together, it is 38% of the world's population. And it is 2.8 billion people. It's more than three times the whole population of the West. So there is a rest of, 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 of uh, uh, which are much more friendly to, 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 to Russia and, and which have not condemned it and, and uh, have not, uh, what shall I say, put uh, sanctions. Egypt has not put sanctions. Even Israel has not put sanctions. And uh, many African countries, or most, uh, they have not put sanctions. So let's say that, that uh, the West keeps up the sanctions. So Putin, he, he, he is left with the rest, which is a big, big majority of the population. The world's population is 6.5 billion. Let's, let's just, and, and, and the West is just 850 million. So to have a new, uh, we will have a new Cold War. That could also be, uh, be the result. But we should not, so, so uh, Putin has, he, he, he has, uh, he has uh, uh, Putin has, has lost to the West, but he has not necessarily <laughs> lost to the rest. So that is also a complication. But I think also in the West, yeah, they because also then I'm worried. thinking about the militarization yeah. happening in the West. Yeah. Maybe that is also because there is a realization of yeah. that we might become the weak part in the future, mm. or that there is yeah. a certain sense of mm. that we are a minority. Yeah. Suddenly, yeah. I don't know. Because I, I think, and and now because I have planned one article to to write a little bit about the the the. Uh, uh, British Empire, it was one empire, and it had its problems, and then the, there was the Russian Soviet Union Empire, and now uh, we have also the American uh, uh, Empire, Pax Americana. Pax Americana, they have also their problems, because China is coming up and, be, and becoming the, the strongest power in the world, and the United States says, it's not possible, they must not do that. It's also an imperial problem they have, like they have in Russia. Because 
the Ukraine thing is, is uh, because Russia has not learned to live without their empire. And, 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 and they try to uh, somehow go back to it. And um, it's not possible with empires. Britain has learned it because there, there was so much pressure and, and so on. Uh, I think Russia will, will learn it the hard way. And, and, and the next fight we will have, it, it is between America and, and China. Uh, and I think, I don't know what will happen with them, but that's the next. That's the next. Yeah, because some of those big empires, Pax Americana, Pax Russica, and, and, and <laughs> Pax Britannica, they have problems because they have not learned to, to live in a modern democratic uh, world. In my opinion, we have to be careful with, 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 uh, with categorizing the world in somehow the good and the bad ones. The good uh, ones, it, it's the democracies who are saying democracy, human rights, etc. And then, uh, and then there, there, there are the others who, who don't have so democratic uh, 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 rules. I think we should a little bit uh, look away from that and then uh, try to, to say, can we find some general rules we would use uh, in the international society? Uh, I mean, uh, peaceful relations and, and, and uh, things like that, international law and so on. I, I think we should be a little bit careful with, with countries which have not uh, full democracy. Because, in my opinion, we have a lot of countries, and in each country there is a fight by the, by the people to have more democracy. And we should let that go on. If, if other countries start to, to, to mingle in, 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 in this because they are not democratic enough, I think it will give problems. But, but I know uh, you will tell me, but then I accept di dictatorships. <laughs> and undemocratic regimes, yes. But I don't think it, it is up to, to Denmark and Sweden and, and Finland to, to go out and uh, uh, fight for, 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 for democracy in other countries. For instance, in, in African countries. Be, because, for, for instance, in the, in the mind of the Danish politicians, practically all African countries, they are not democracies and, and uh, Rwanda and uh, Morocco and so on. And there will always be some, some parties who come and say, but there is something wrong with the human rights. And, and, and nearly <laughs> a, a big part of the world will not be democratic in our sense. And uh, I think we, we have to cooperate with them anyway. And then say it's good if the peoples are fighting for, for, for democracy. But I don't think we should have, as I say, an ideological struggle to change uh, the world. Once it was for Christianity, that, that we should out to uh, Christianize uh, Africa and, and, and so on. Now we have to, to, to go to, 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 to Africa and Asia and to, 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 uh, to, to fight for another ideology, democracy, human rights etc. Et we have to find some other ways. I'm not saying uh, that I have found the, the, the right things, but we have to be careful of all categories whereby we have the good ones, democracy, and, and the, the bad ones. So one of the conclusions is also that if we haven't been humble enough in, in, in terms of looking towards Russia, also what's going on in Russia, what is, how is this country developing? Uh, yeah. And, in, 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 and therefore, we haven't perhaps been able yeah. to predict what is, what yeah. is happening, mm -hmm. what is going on. Yeah. Before we finish, yes. can I just uh, read the two last ones? Yeah, because, because that's your conclusion. Be yeah. Yeah. Now, um, f for me, uh, the starting point uh, is that accumulation of weapons do not create peace and solve conflicts. Uh, weapons are dead things. Only people can create peace through negotiation, dialogue, compromises, and finding common grounds. So people are very, very important. And we don't solve problems just by giving uh, uh, 18 million uh, billion dollars more, more to, 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 to weapons. It doesn't solve the underlying uh, problems. First, when people start to talk, 
and have compromises and so on, something happens. We must never forget that. What shall we do? It's the last one. What if government do not act? What if we go into a situation where, what shall I say, sanctions continue and problems with Russia and so on uh, continue? Then I think we should go to people to people. We, uh, we, we should contact, uh, for instance, here from Denmark at least, we should uh, talk to, 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 to people in Russia, try to NGOs in Russia or think tanks and so on, try to contact them and, and then start there. And also pressure the governments to open up. There has been a lot of, of, of closure on all what is Russian, Russian culture and even scholarships to Russia, they have been uh, withdrawn. No culture. We must simply not, they are like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, untouchables, uh, etc. This is wrong. We have to communicate with, uh, with, the, with the Russian people and so on. And, and then align with other NGOs and the last, use the media, use the internet. That's something we can do. So, so both with the Chinese and, and the Russians and the Iranians, those countries where, which uh, the Western world sees as enemies, uh, if our governments can't find out, then, then uh, representatives of the people must step in. And therefore, I'm glad I'm talking to, to crossing borders because it is what you're doing. Uh, uh, and, and that is what is necessary in, in, in a time uh, like now, because the governments can't find out. Yeah. Thank you for that. So that's that all. would be the last word. That's all.